it's good that they're talking about the problem, but they're also not really discussing the solution. And there's another way of framing it. There's like the kind of Elon Muskism of framing the solution to anti-white racism is colorblind individualism, that we just, all forms of racism are bad, including racism against white people. And so we just need to just forget race as having any importance. Uh, and of course, that doesn't really advance the ball because if we have white people trying to act like race doesn't exist while everyone else continues acting like race does exist, we're, we're basically in the same position that we're already in right now. That's what conservatives are already doing. They've been trying to do that for decades. It doesn't work. So there's still pressure that needs to be applied, obviously. Um, well, you've made a really good point there. Problem. You've made a really good point there because solutions are an important thing. And I, I spoke about this earlier, the way the, the left pull things in their direction to pass legislation. And you've got to not only hold these people's feet to the fire when it comes to talking about the important issues, but you have to make sure that their solution to the issues they are talking about is the correct one. So the solutions to the problems we face are... Firstly, for white people to embrace in-group preference, we need to form our own communities, we need to build communities, we need to look after each other, we need to think of each other as extended family, just as all other racial or ethnic groups do. That's very important. The second thing is we need to take power. We need to rule over our own nations. We need to rule over our own patches of land, our own areas, our own countries. We must absolutely be in control. We can't be ruled by foreigners or people who hate us and are acting on behalf of foreign powers. That's the second very important thing. And thirdly, the final solution, without, <laughs> that wasn't a pun, is peaceful separation. The final part of this is to, I can't believe I said that, uh, the final part of this is that we must peacefully separate from other racial groups. Now, this doesn't mean we can't be friends with these people. It doesn't mean we can't trade with them. It doesn't mean we can't visit them. It doesn't mean there can't be uh, limited immigration in some senses. Like, you know, the, the really awful argument is, oh, when you say no immigration, are you going to stop that one Japanese brain surgeon from coming here? You know, the one that comes every 10 years and saves a child's life. Well, obviously we're not, you know what I mean? We're, we're obviously not. What we're talking about is, is swamping mass immigration um, from countries that are filled with low IQ people that come here to take our jobs, um, push down wages, sexually assault women in the country, commit crime, and basically make the country into a third world dump. That's what we're talking about. But they're the solutions. But when you see people like Charlie Kirk, when you see people like Matt Walsh, their solutions are that anti-white racism is a product of diversity gone wrong. And the success would be secured if diversity was done right. Now, that is not the right solution. So you saw this recently uh, with Sadiq Khan. So Sadiq Khan recently got into a little bit of, uh, I'll say hot water. He's never in hot water because London's, you know, only 37% white British now. So he's appealing to uh, a minority that are always going to, well, not a minority. He's, he's appealing to groups that are always going to vote for him that have now uh, usurped white British people in Britain's capital. But he recently released some brand guidelines or his office did and one of those brand guidelines was uh, not to use pictures of white British families to promote the, the mayor's office, because he says that that doesn't represent real Londoners. Now, obviously, that's an anti-white statement. But interestingly, if you look at the Conservatives Party's response to that, you see, my response to that would be clear. Right. London is a city in Britain. It's our capital city. It's been colonised. White people have been reduced to a minority. That's a terrible thing. And now we're being maligned. Now we're being discriminated against. We must Im unpick the multicultural society. We must start deporting illegal immigrants immediately. And we must have a 
generous voluntary repatriation policy to ensure that the demographics of London are restored to an acceptable level. However, if you look at the way that the Conservatives dealt with this, and I'm going to quote directly from a woman called Susan Hall, who's the Conservative mayoral candidate for the 2024 mayoral elections, she said the following, all Londoners are real Londoners. We should be celebrating London's diversity, but sadly, the mayor is more interested in dividing people. He should apologise. You see, now that's a stupid statement. That's not a solution. Her solution to whites being reduced to a maligned minority that shouldn't even be featured on material promoting London is that diversity is brilliant. Diversity is great. This isn't a this isn't a, a, a problem that is born from diversity, multiculturalism and mass immigration. It's born from the fact that diversity hasn't been implemented correctly. And if we were all absolutely colorblind and if we all really, really held the value of diversity in our heart genuinely and viewed everyone as equal, this wouldn't have happened. That's not the solution. In fact, that's that's the kind of rhetoric that got us where we are now. And that's the kind of rhetoric that needs to be thrown out of the window and replaced with genuine solutions to restore Western nations to places where their indigenous populations should remain a majority. And when I say indigenous populations, when you're talking about places like Australia and America, I know whites aren't indigenous to Australia or America. However, white people did found the nations you see there today. Now, that doesn't mean I think aboriginals or, uh, you know, Native Americans should be genocided or done away with. But let's face it, you can't claim that modern Australia or modern America have anything to do with the indigenous people of those countries. That would be nonsensical. So what I'm saying is, in nations where whites are either indigenous or whites were the founding fathers, whites need to stay as a super majority or this diversity will destroy us. And this, if anyone comes selling you the snake oil, that the only reason this isn't working is because diversity isn't being implemented correctly. They are exactly as bad and terrible as the people who tell you that communism uh, is the best system ever it just hasn't been implemented properly yet. All of these systems are terrible for white people and need to be thrown out the window. Yeah, I mean, in some ways, I think the colorblind conservatism, the Martin Luther King conservatism uh, of Tucker Carlson, the civic nationalism of Vivek Ramaswamy, I think this in some ways is potentially more dangerous in certain respects than the left, because at least the left, insofar as they are so hostile to white people um, that they reject assimilation into white, some kind of civic nationalist identity into this universal Australianness or Britishness or Americanness or whatever, they reject even that. Um, in a certain sense, they then allow for white people as a group in these countries to kind of preserve their specific identity because they kind of have to to persecute them as their enemy if they allow white people to dissolve into this civic nationalist uh racial soup then there's no white people to point out and blame for everything anymore because they've disappeared so in a certain sense we can still hold on to our identity and the uh immigrants that are coming in hold on to their identities rather than all trying to embrace ours and that maintains a certain group difference that doesn't exist if we were to embrace what the conservatives want, which is kind of interesting. Like you see in conservative circles, when we look at like conservative politicians versus leftist politicians, the conservative politicians are more likely to be uh, in mixed marriages across races. Um, whereas when you look at like the far left, they're all white people, <laughs> basically. It's kind of funny how that's that's the case. But the yeah, so you know, obviously there's obviously benefits as well to conservatives in the sense that well, you know, the conservative ideology cares more about freedom of speech and certain other things that are beneficial to nationalists. And so there's an argument to be had there, which is which poison is more poisonous. But I think you know, it's in, I think it's important to kind of recognize that one aspect that civic nationalism is in many ways more pernicious 
than just straight up anti-white leftism.